coming from St. Louis, Florissant, Missouri, a suburb. This is the second championship round appearance this year. Finished fifth in this huge field. He um, has one victory, most important to Pete and his family, winning before the hometown fans in St. Louis, and very impressively. He's going against Mike Edwards of Tulsa. Shot number one. Yeah, baby, yeah. He liked it. He is Mike with a RF microphone, so you'll hear his comments. We mentioned the parents of Pete Weber and Jim and Gene Edwards watching in Tulsa, rooting for their son, who's looking for his first victory. Steadily improving, coming off a slump, has been tough here in the championship. Two different styles, and Mike on the right lane leaves the seven pen bow. Chris, uh, you picked it out. Mike Edwards uh, has an ideal style, but he's had to work on his game a little bit this year. Four step delivery, cups that ball. Very strong young man. The thing he has to guard against is not topping the ball, trying to hook it too much. And you see he leaves the seven pin. That's the hit that they're going to have to carry to be a winner today. The solid pocket I think he'll get most of the time. All right, now that tension has been released on Mike Edwards, who is 24 years old, has yet to win, whereas his opponent, Pete Weber, in his seven years has won eight titles. And both today would like to move from that first game, go through four games, and get it all. And this year, Nelson, we've had them start from this position and win it all. From the number, the winner of the first match, the winner has come five times so far this year. The tournament leader has won twice, but today for the big money, I think anything can happen. And it's a 10 pin on the left lane. And here we see brand new bowling pins. They put them in at the start of the week. They have approximately 200 games on these pins, and you don't get that bouncing pinfall that we often see where the six pin like right there would bounce out, knock the 10 out of the channel. The premium's going to be on the solid hit. The pocket has been fairly easy to hit from that deep inside line, but carry has been sporadic. Very smooth cross lane shot by Mike Edwards of Tulsa. So he is marked with a pair of spares, whereas Pete Weber Opened with a strike. Now he'll be shooting in the second frame of our first game. And um, whoever gets to the top spot and wins it all will have to go through some great champions. Because next up, to meet the winner of this game, will be the defending champion and bowler of the year, Mike Albee. Then the great Mark Roth, followed by Tom Kreitz of Tampa, our tournament leader. out early, Pete Weber with that double. Pete Weber with that tremendous style, that such a small body, has a good push away. Look at the concentration, the high back swing, he gets that leverage from the top of the swing and drives through with that pivot step and the tremendous wrist action. And at this time he generates the kind of pin action that you need to win today. A hit that they did not carry very often this week, the light hit. Weber, with his power, was able to do it. Leads by 11. He saw after his last shot, which gave him a double, he, something bothered him in the audience. He should be able to brush off whatever concerned him and go right about his game here in the third frame. But he comes up high, avoids the split, leaves the sixth. The championship here was set up the characteristics of lanes 25 and 26 at Imperial Lanes. 25 hooks quite a bit more than 26 as Pete Weber is quickly up on the approach to shoot this very switch balls. He'll make the six pin across lane. Well, Nelson, it's very gratifying on this unusually warm day in Toledo, Ohio, that in that final game today, it's a total of 70,000 at stake. When we first started, we never thought that would happen. In 1958, the PBA Tour bowled all the season for a total of 58 or 59,000. They've come a long way. Mike Edwards trails by 10. And he left the five pin. Thought he might get it. Can't let his dauber get down now. It's early in the game. Anything can happen. 
Here's the pin mix. You watch the head pin go to the sideboard. And if those pins had about 1,000 games or 1,500 games on them, they'd be broken in a little bit more, and they would bounce around just a pinch more, and you would carry that type of hit. Edwards has been around the pocket the first three frames, but no strikes as of yet. So Mike, who's in his first TV appearance of 86, last year he was in four of them, and he had a very good year winning 48,385. There you see the 11 pin difference. You see how that came about. The double and a spare and three spares for Tulsa's Edwards. Once again, the championship pair, the left-hand lane hooks about three boards more than the right-hand lane. That's the characteristic of this bowling center in all the years I've bowled here. So that's what we watch for today. the type of shots he was doing last night when he jumped from 7th to 4th with a big 247 against Bill Peters. More of this first game following this message. Eight-time PBA winner Pete Weber of Florissant, Missouri opened with the double, spare in the third, using the full approach and then some. Now in the fourth frame, leading by 11. Pete Weber with that slight stature needs to generate as much power through his legs and his whole body as he can so he uses 17 feet I hit leaving the 3-6 let's replay and get a better uh, idea of his form from behind standing all the way to the end of the approach much like Marshall Holman all the slightly built players they use that full approach they get the high backswing and Peters quickly up with another ball to cover this 3-6 spearing left on that shot as we mentioned earlier, the sixth year that the PBA National Championship and Toledo Trust have hosted this event, it's the 18th year that we've been coming here. As you look at the prize money, there are the facts and figures. 45, 25, 15, 10, and 8. Lots of bucks, but still the figure that uh, as a touring pro, and I'm sure the, the middle of the pack players, Weber, Roth, and Albee are looking at, is that seven-year exemption to the Firestone Tournament of Champions. In essence, Chris, you could put another 14,000 value on that because last in the Firestone's 2,000 every year. Right. That's it. Yeah. And as he said, that's it. Now, Mike Edwards has to start stringing them. The hand action of Pete Weber. He twists that wrist at the top of the backswing then gets it down underneath it lets that wrist roll around the ball lifts straight up the back tremendous power now Mike Edwards up in the fifth with a strike here could take the lead not to be the three pound eight ounce pins brand new Chris what happens is watch the action of the head pin now watch as the ball comes in light the head pin goes to the sideboard almost goes out of your shot now watch it come back across the lane and take a whack at the 10 pin there it goes that would have given Mike Edwards the lead but now he has another single pin spare he's converted three so far and he stays perfect continuing to mark hanging in there consistency off in the name of the game. Mike, an excellent clutch bowler. He